Hi, my name is Sam Maltese. In today's instructions, we will be showing you how to wire up a single pole switch to control a light. Now, a light could be a simple light bulb like this on a keyless fixture, or it could be a pot light, or any other fixtures that you can buy at many of the local uh, home improvement stores. The same principle applies to all these types of fixtures. First thing we're going to talk about is the wiring diagram that we're going to discuss and then I'll go into the shop and show you how to actually wire it up. So if you're studying to be an electrician or an apprentice, obviously when you're wiring up houses, you're going to have a blueprint to follow or some kind of wiring diagram. That's what we have on the board here. So I'm showing a panel here with breakers in it, showing a square box, which is your 1104 boxes that take switches and plugs. I'm showing an octagon box, that is where your light fixtures are fastened. We're showing the symbol here for a light bulb or some kind of fixture of some kind, all right, that's connected. Or you can buy a fixture at one of the uh, local improvement stores. And I'm also showing a switch that has two dots and a line with a pivot point, which is basically what a switch is. It's got two screws, power goes on the top, and it pivots and opens and closes. So we're going to be using 14.2 today, so I'm going to draw a, wire, a line coming from the box to the panel, indicating it's a 14.2. And I'm going to draw a line across this way and a long, short line. The long line represents that it's a neutral, and the short line represents that it is a hot. And you're going to need a 14.2 wire going across here. And once again, we'll mark it 14.2. And to make things simpler, we'll draw the long line as a blue wire, indicating it's white, because you can't draw white on this whiteboard, and a black wire for the black wire, okay? So that's a 14-2. If I was using a 14-3, I would have a white wire, a black wire, and a red wire, indicating two hots and a neutral. But in today's lab, we're just gonna deal with a 14-2, so we'll take that black wire out, a white wire, red wire out, and we'll draw it like that. So we have two pieces of wire, one from the panel to the switch box and from the switch box to the light. Once you strip away the outer jacket of your 14-2, you're gonna have three conductors in it, a black, a white, and a ground. While in the panel, you're gonna take your ground wire, you're gonna hook it up to the ground lugs, and you'll do the same with the ground wire around the screw of the box. You're gonna wrap around counterclockwise Kind of clockwise is the correct way of doing it because as you tighten the screw, it will suck in the wire and it won't come out. You do the same for the other ground wire coming into the box from the, from the light, wrap it around, and the last ground wire is wrapped around in the octagon box. So that takes care of our grounds. The black wire will be hooked up to one of the 15 amp breakers, and then this black wire is going to go to one of the screws on the switch. In this case, the wire should always go on the top screw of the switch. So if you're holding the switch with the screws on the right hand side, you should hook up your hot wire on the top. That is the pivot point. As drawn in this diagram here, this is the pivot point. So this black wire will be hooked up to the top screw. So I'm going to show this wire being hooked up to the top screw. So a close up of the switch, you'll see that this is a switch. And if I'm holding it on the right hand side will be the screws. This is where I would hook up the hot wire, and this is where the wire going to the light would go. This is a type of switch where you wrap the wires around. It's also designed to take some wires into these little holes in the back. So that is a single pole switch. Once we have the black wire on the uh, top screw, you're left with the one less wire, that is a neutral wire. It'll come into the box, and we're just gonna draw like that now because we're gonna have to moret that to the other neutral wire coming from the light box. So the neutral coming between the light box, the octagon box, and the switch will come out. And I will basically take the two white wires, strip an inch off the insulator, twist them together with your alignment pliers, and add a marette to these wires. And they will be pushed into the box once it's all wired up. The black wire coming from the octagon box it's going to go to the bottom of the switch. 
When we get to the light, we're going to have a black wire and a white wire. Now, depending on the type of fixture you have, if you happen to have a keyless like we have today and I'll be using it in the shop, and if I were to zoom in on this, you'll see that the keyless has screws on the back and it's just a regular light bulb. So one wire is going to go on one side. This is the neutral side, it's silver, and the brass side is hot. When looking at a simple keyless fixture, you'll see that there is copper on one side and copper in the middle. The middle is the hot and the side is the neutral. Different types of fixtures, sometimes you see it's a complete silver on the outside, just this happens to have two slots. So like I said, depending on the fixture you have, today we're using the keyless indicating this fixture here. So the wires can actually go directly onto the fixture. If you were to buy a fixture at one of the improvement stores, most fixtures come with three wires, a black wire, a white wire, and a ground. And then you would make the connections to the existing black wires. But for today's lab, we're just gonna go directly to the light on one of the screw connections, and the neutral will go to the other screw connection, silver and brass. Okay, and that is our wiring diagram for the single pole switch. Now there's many ways of wiring up a lighting. We're gonna show you one way first, and then in the second part of the lab, I will show you another way to wire up a lighting switch where power starts at the light. But for this one here, you gotta look at it as, and we need to draw our neutral in here, which you forgot, there you go. The way current runs, it's in a loop system. So power will go in from the breaker, will go in the black wire, it'll come to the switch, if the switch is closed, open, current can no longer flow. So we're going to change the direction of this switch to closed position, such as this. And this allows current to flow into the other black wire. It comes into the light bulb that has a filament. It flows through the filament, gets red hot, it gets white hot. It returns on the neutral, the connection to the red, and back to the neutral bar, and the light will come on. If you open up the switch, it stops the flow of current and the light shuts off. So now that we've done the wiring diagram, we'll go into the shop and I'll show you how to wire this up using 14.2 in your electrical tools. Okay, we're in our shop that imitates a residential home that's made of two by four studs or two by six studs. And we've got a couple boxes mounted here that we were talking about in the classroom. We have a level of four box and we have an octagon box. This is where your light goes, and this is where your switch will go. I'll show you a couple things about these two boxes before we get started and before we start pulling some wire. Okay, here's our 1104 box. You'll notice that it has some uh, loops here. That's usually where you put your long screws or nails to fasten it to the two by fours, all right? You'll also notice at the top here, looks like little washers. That's where your cables will go. You just take your screwdriver and if you're going to run one wire on the top you can just kind of flip this back twist it off and that removes that and that's where your cable will go and then you tighten it down with the clamps at the back you'll also notice the ground screws at the back that's where your grounds will be hooked up and you can run wires like i said from the top or the bottom this box is designed to take at least four cables Another nice feature about some of these boxes is it has these little indentations. The very first one is an indicator that that's where the edge of the stud goes. So if you put that on the edge of the stud, that leaves you the box sticking out. So when they put the drywall up, it will actually be flush with the drywall. If you put this flush with your 2x4, the box will be buried behind the drywall. You might not be able to find it. But by putting it on those indicators, and leaving a 3 eighths of an inch at the edge there, or half inch for your drywall, your box will stick out. It also has some other features here. This box has these little pointed, looks like nails. It's a feature where you can actually put your box in place, tap it on the opposite side, and it will stick to the two by four, allowing you temporarily to go pick up a screw and start fastening your box. So it's got a couple of nice features that you can use. In your octagon box, has very similar features. It has the clamps, okay? It has the washers that you remove to pass the wires. It also has the bracket that takes the screws, and it has those fastening nails that you can hammer 
and keep the box in place, whether it be on the ceiling joist or on a wall joist like we're doing today, right? So both boxes have very similar features. Okay, I've gone ahead and mounted the box for the switch onto the 2x4 stud at 52 inches, as we mentioned in the previous video. Most switches are mounted at 52 inches unless you're dealing maybe with a handicap house, someone with a handicap and on a wheelchair, then they might be mounted lower. But in general, we're mounting them at 52 inches. You'll also notice the little tabs I spoke about that gives you the indicator how far out the box must stick out for the 2x4. And like I said, it's designed basically when they put the drywall up, the box will be flush with the drywall. So if I were to take imitate that the drywall is going to finish and put that on, you'll see that the box is flush with the drywall and then you can put the switches and plugs in when you come to wire them up. Okay, so it works really nice for fastening uh, the correct depth of your box and the same applies for the ceiling box. Okay, I've gone ahead and passed the wires through the walls. So I started off with the panel as we talked about in class we're going to wire from the panel to the light switch and from the light switch to the light so we pass the wires along the 2x4s and this is a 14-2 coming across we're going to come up into our box and then from our box we're going to have another piece of wire that goes into our octagon box and now we're going to show how we wire it up Okay, we're going to begin. Uh, as mentioned in the previous uh, lesson, you should always have at least um, 10 inches of outside insulator strip to get to the black and white wires. The reason being is by the time you make the connections in the box and you have your conductors outside, the cold heating core requires you to have a minimum of 6 inches of conductor going to your switch. So that's a requirement by code. So in general, like I said in the last video, I like to uh, I like to have about 10 inches or 12 inches, whatever you feel comfortable with, but you need, must have at least 10 for it to work fine. So I'm going to work out and strip my cables to expose the black and white wires. So this is the cable coming from the panel. And I'm just using a regular electrician's banana knife, right? Hook knife. I can do the same with the wires coming up here. So I'm gonna once again 10 inches. Get this cable ready before I put them in the box. So I'll strip both sides, or I'll strip one side for now, so I can do the 1104 box, and then I can strip the other one when it goes up to the octagon box. All right, so that cable is ready. I'll just place it in there for now, out of the way. I'm gonna remove the washers I spoke about. The one, one on the top because I'm going to have one cable going from here to here and the cable coming in from the panel. So I'm going to remove one of the washers and just kind of back and forth that removes the washer. If I remove the right washer, what I usually do on the top is I remove the left. So the two of them don't hit when they come inside the box. So in this case, if I remove the bottom right one, I'm going to remove the top left one. If you have more than two cables going into the box, then obviously that won't work. You're going to have to maneuver the cable around. So I'll take my cable, and as I mentioned in the previous video, I like to put a little bit of a curve on the cable when I'm bringing it in. So when I bring it into the box, it will go smoothly in and it won't hit the top of the box. So I just push that through, push that cable in, get it ready for it to be clamped down. All right, we got some extra cable there. And I'll get the other one ready, push it in. And we are ready to clamp down on the box, all right? So I take my red Robbie, or number two Robinson, and I'll clamp down on the screws. A lot of the screws will take a red Robbie, which is a square, it will take a Phillips, which is common in the United States, and it will also take a flat. So I'm gonna tighten down those screws and those clamps on the, on the, on the Romex wire, or MMP90 in this case, but not too, too tight, just firm enough that the cable is in place and when you tug on them, they won't come out, all right? Now that I got those two cables in place, I'm gonna zoom in and show you some of the connections I'm gonna be making in this box. Okay, I've zoomed into the box. As you can see, we have two blacks, two whites, and two ground wires, also known as bond. And what I'm gonna do is, as in the previous video, I'm gonna push them down out of the way 
believe in one of my grounds. The reason I do that is the first thing I want to connect here are my ground screws. So I take this one screw and I wrap it around my ground wire in a counterclockwise direction around that screw. And I take the other ground and I wrap it around the other screw, if it's available, around the around the other ground wire. So I got one wrapped around this way, one wrapped around that way. I kind that up. Make sure it's nice and snug so that they won't come loose. And as I'm tightening it, if it's wrapped around the correct, correct direction, it will actually pull in the ground wire. Now you have a couple options here. Some, some switches have a ground wire on it and you can hook up the ground to it. In general cases, there's no rule in the Canadian code that requires the switches to be grounded. So I usually snip them off with my side cutters and that's what I'm gonna do in this case. But once again, you can always leave one long if you want or push them right into the back and make sure they're right in the back so they don't have any possibility of making contact with the hot wires on the switch. So I'm going to take my side cutters and I'm going to cut off the dead end of the copper wire, not the one that's wrapping around obviously. And that gives me some copper wire that you can recycle, okay? I've added the wiring diagram to the video indicating the white wire that goes to the panel. The black wire also comes from the panel for the feed and the white and black on the top. We are going to moret the two whites together as shown in the diagram. Well, the neutrals just basically be going to be moretted and go right up to the light. So I'm going to cut this at a certain distance. This does not have to be at six inches because no device is going to be hooked up to it. So you can actually make this a little shorter. I make it long enough that I can still work here. You cut it off, I strip an inch off and then I'm going to spin those around with my lining pliers put them together copper to copper so they're at the same length and spin them around so that they are connected and you get something like that all right this is where my rep will go so we're going to Trim that off a little bit because you don't want it to have the sticking out the copper wire. I'll show you that in one second. What I have here are three sizes of morettes that can be used. We're going to use the uh, 31 morette. There's also a bigger size in case you have bigger wires or more wires. And you'll find a smaller one sometimes they come with the light fixtures when you're purchasing them. But that's only good if you're connecting one wire in the light fixture. So today we're going to use the yellow one which is good for two 14-2s. You'll notice if I were to put this on that it's got to cover all of the copper. If you have any copper sticking out at the back of the moret, that's not good. The whole idea of the moret is to cover up the possible live wires and conductors. So in this case what I'm going to do is actually trim my wires a little bit, just a little bit, not too much, still leaving a twisting action there. And then I'll spin this on in a clockwise direction until it grabs. And you'll actually know it grabs because it actually starts to spin the wires also. Then you have a good connection, that won't come off. That's the neutral connected. I'll take that and push that into the back with my thumb and get it out of the way. We are now ready to make our connections to our switches. So remember, this is a hot and this is the wire going up to the light. So this will go on the top part of the screw as we mentioned in the classroom. So I'm going to make these the same length. And like I said, I'm going to need six inches and my six inches that I know of involves me holding my thumb up like this. And if I put it against the box, I'll notice that these conductors are roughly the right distance. I'm going to trim them so they're both the same length. So when I hook them up to the switch, they go in the box evenly. I'm going to strip one inch off each one and I'm going to put loops on them. As I mentioned in the lab, you can wrap them around these screws. You can also push them into the back. These are what they call compression fitting. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. It's approved by CSA standards, Canadian standards. But I always like to wrap it around the screw. It gives me a tighter fit and a more secure fit. And there's a possibility of it coming loose with uh, any possibility of cold or hot in the temperatures in the home. So I'm going to wrap around, make a loop on two wires. I've made my two loops, okay? 
Gonna grab my green Robby, the, the screws on my switch are a green Robby, or number one. And this is my power black wire. This is my wire going to the light. So my power back wire goes on the top screw. As I mentioned, I'm gonna hold it and tighten it with my screwdriver till it's tight, like that. You'll notice that the black wire, the insulation is just at the edge. It's not underneath the screw. If it's underneath the screw, there's a possibility you could insulate the power from the screw. So you wanna make sure you just have copper under the screw. And you repeat that process with the other wire that's gonna be going up to the light, okay? And there you go, we had that hooked up. Now keep in mind that I'm hooking up the switch here as a demonstration. We really wouldn't be hooking up the switch until the actual drywall has been installed and you'll be coming in and putting your light switches after the drywall was installed and doing all these connections. So for the purpose of this video to show you how it's wired up, I'm wiring it up with the open stud system. So that is done. We can push that in if we were correct. Your 62 screws will be fastened over to the top and the bottom, and you'll be ready to go. And that would stop on the drywall. Okay? Now we're going to wire up the light, and I'll zoom into that section of the light and show you how we're going to wire up the light. Okay, we've zoomed into the octagon box where we're going to be hooking up our keyless fixture, our light fixture, and we have the other end of the cable that we hooked up to the bottom screw. So now I need to figure out the length to where I have to trim this. And I'm gonna remove, the, I removed the washer already, so I'm gonna feed that into the light. Obviously, as you see, I have lots here, but as a quick practice, you will, you will learn to uh, have the correct amount of wire when cutting it in, you won't waste wire. Okay, I'm gonna tighten down my clamp, same way I did in my other box. Right. You'll notice I can see a little bit of the white wire or the insulating conductor, the outside conductor on top of the clamp. That's what should happen. You should not be tightening your wires on the actual conductor. You should be tightening on the outer jacket. And I'm going to pull those down and we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to take my ground wire and wrap it around my ground screw to create a, a bond to the box. Now in this case, I don't usually cut off this bond wire and the reason I don't do that in most cases, if you go by a light fixture that's got some metal to it, it has a ground wire attached to it. And trying to hook up the ground wire to trying to hook up the ground wire to the to the box with that short wire they provide you is very difficult. So leaving yourself a little bit of ground wire and marretting it makes your job easier when installing light fixtures. Alright, so I'm gonna trim my wires to the length I need, okay? And I will basically, if I'm not using the ground wire, which I'm not doing that today, I will just push this to the back neatly, put it back. And I'm gonna put loops on this wire so I can hook it up to my keyless that has screws on it. Now, if I had a light fixture that came with wires attached to it, I can just basically strip these wires and erect them like I did the neutral wire down below. So either way, uh, it all depends on what type of fixture you're using. So I'm gonna strip this one and put a loop on it. All right, I have a loop on both my white and my black, white being my neutral. And I'm gonna hook up the neutral on the silver wires in a clockwise direction again. And my black wire on my brass wires in a clockwise direction. Okay, and we're ready to fasten that. Once again, driver will probably be here in this case when you're putting these up and we'll fasten that to the box okay so we wired up the light switch uh, the light we wired up the light switch all that's left to do is to wire up the other end of the cable that is at the panel okay one thing i forgot to mention before we head to the panel is that we also have to staple our romex wire our mnd90 to the studs so that the wire doesn't come outside the wall when it's being drywall and no possibility of drywall screws damaging it so the rule in the Canadian code is that your first staple that's near a box has to be within 300 millimeters or one feet. So basically, here's your 300 millimeters, one foot, and you'll notice that the staple I placed here is at seven inches, and that means code. So the code says within. So you can put it at two inches, four inches, eight inches, or right at 12 inches. 
but it has to have a staple there in at 12 inches. In this case here, because we have the light so low, I'm able to be cold because I put one in the middle and both that staple serves a purpose for the light and the switch. Now if this was a long runner wire along a wallway and you had your first staple, the next staple will be required to be at 1.5 meters. That's if it's run along a 2x4 and not going through any holes. An example of this would be in the attic when you're running cables in the attic from one room to another. If the wires are going through holes like we did in this uh, lab here that I showed earlier, the holes act as a support and therefore no staples are required because it's basically uh, supporting the cable for not being exposed to any screws from the exterior. Okay, here we are at the panel. We're going to run the wire inside the panel and hook it up to our 15 amp breaker. The 14 2 gauge wire can only go in a 15 amp breaker depending on the gauge determines the size of the breaker. Now in this case we have a we have these great connectors or quick connectors that go into these half inch holes. They're designed to allow the cable to run through to run through the conductor. So they're supposed to go through and they grab so they only goes one way. So that's what we're going to do with this cable here. We're going to measure it and we're going to strip it before we put in the cable. So I'm going to once again strip my cable. The length of the cable you need will, is determined basically where you're going in the panel. So if the, if the breaker is at the bottom of the panel, you might need more cable. If you need to go down with the conductors and come around to the other side of the panel, you might have a lot need to strip more cable. So it depends whether you're coming on the left or the right, where your panel is mounted, what restrictions you have determines the, the amount of cable. In my class, I like my students to come in on where these three holes are and keep all the breakers on the, the close side. So we're going to strip this just as we did another case and we're going to push it into the holes to a point where once again I just have a little bit of white insulation showing. All right, I'm going to zoom in so we see a little better. Okay, we're going to make the connections at the panel now. I'm going to do the same thing I did in my boxes. I'm going to pull the black and white wire behind, run my ground wire and hook up my bond wire to the bonding bar that's here. Okay, tighten it up so that it's nice and snug. And now I'm going to hook up my neutral to my neutral bar and my black to my breaker. What I like to usually do for uh, better workmanship, I like to try to hook up my neutral conductor in line with the breaker where the black wire is going to be hooked up to. This in case you ever have to do any troubleshooting in the future, you don't have to go digging for which neutral wire belongs to which black wire. So since my breaker is on the top, I'm going to shape my white wire nicely so that it's near the breaker, strip it, take off an inch of the insulator and put it behind the screw. In this case, I'm going to tighten it with my Robbie. And you can see the conductor on both sides of the bar, so make sure you strip enough that you can see both sides, a little bit of copper on both sides of it. Make sure it's tight, give it a pull. And then I'm going to do the same with my black conductor. I like to shape my wires where I push them to the back, make some 90 degree turns. So when you finish the panel, you have a nice looking panel. So for your inspector, you will have no issues. When he sees good quality work, he knows that a qualified electrician has done the work. So we put that in the breaker and we tighten it up. check to make sure it's tight and I try forming it again and as you can see I'll kind of zoom in maybe that is nicely clean and straight okay here we have a close-up see the wire coming in I have a little bit of white showing I come down make a connection to my my ground and my white and my neutral are basically lined up they're parallel to each other and you have to make sure that your connection to the breaker that the copper that you stripped is underneath the device and that you have not tightened down on the actual insulator. 
So you want to make sure you're stripping up that you don't have any insulator behind the breaker because you'll be looking, troubleshooting for a problem and you can't figure out why you have no power. And it's as simple thing as having this insulator underneath the screw. And even though the breaker's on, no power will go on the wire. Okay, we've wired up the wires to the circuit breaker. We did the switch, we did the light bulb. I've now fastened the switch to the box. I've kind of put the drywall there to imitate that we came back after the drywall was up and everything should be working. Let's see how we did. There we go. We have power coming into the switch, through the switch. When the switch closes, it allows power to go up to the light and the light turns on and you have a working single pole switch. Our next lab will show you how to wire this with the power starting at the light and what changes you have to make when you bring the power to the octagon box first instead of the light switch box.